I think that she will be a part of our life for way after she is 18. I just realized that I need to give myself uh, more time, I guess, before we take another long-term placement. So that's, you know, my focus for 2024. Hey guys, happy new year. My name is Lisa Hoppy and my husband Peter and I are foster parents. I make weekly videos about foster care. Definitely subscribe if you are not already. Um, I did not have a video out last week, so this is my first video of 2024. And I thought I would kind of just like, you know, for this first video kind of uh, let you know what our plan is um, as far as foster care for the next at least several months if not the whole year. Um, so last year was a lot. Um, if you have followed our journey you know that we had a sibling group of three, four, uh, over two years and they reunified in March and then we took a complete two month break. Um, just you know did nothing I needed a break and then we did respite for a while we had 20 kids through respite and then um, we have had 10 um, placements uh, since September so the last like you know quarter of uh, 2023 was really crazy um, it was crazy how many you know, placements we had and it was like short term. Uh, we only have right now one um, with us and it's our 17 year old. And someone recently, one of the comments had said, it'd be really helpful if you give the 17 year old a nickname. And so I thought long and hard, like what nickname do I, I give um, the 17 year old with us? And I actually talked about it um, with her and how she wants to uh, be represented on, on her channel. And, you know, the first one of the first things she said was actually a, a, a thing that I had thought of too. But then I told her why I didn't want to pick it. It was a food, uh, one of her favorite foods. And then um, she was like, oh yeah, that, that makes sense. Don't, that makes sense not to use that. Um, so what I, we had come up with and uh, is the month that we met which was July. So she um, was one of the four teens that we watched for respite for several weeks um, this past summer. And then um, in October is when um, she came to stay with us. We had watched her one or two other times for respite. I can't remember if it was one or two. Oh, but we had like picked her up a couple of times too um, for an event. So anyways, we had seen her um, several times um, and then then she came to stay with us in October and I wasn't really sure uh, you know how long she would be with us and of course there's always so many unknowns um, with foster care and all of that uh, and I wouldn't have been able to tell you this before because I really wasn't sure but now I can say with pretty certain um, that she will um, be with us until um, she uh, heads into collaborative care, which is what you go into after you turn 18. So I will probably make some other videos about that and what that process looks like. Uh, it's technically not aging out because um, DCS will walk um, through um, until the 21st birthday um, of a child. And so there's a lot that I'm still learning with that and what that looks like and how uh, the, the youth that do take um, collaborative care and actually do the work required, that there's actually a lot of great benefits um, that is offered um, through Department of Child Services. So it doesn't sound as uh, scary as I thought. And uh, I know I'll probably get, you know, questions and stuff, but um, there's a lot of her story that I just am not going uh, to to share. I'm like, okay, so what is our plan for other placements? And um, the last longer placement that we had um, at the end of 2023, we had for a month and a half, um, and I made a video about them. And uh, you know, they are wonderful kids, but it they were definitely a challenge uh, for us because I had been, I feel like very like overstimulated um, from all of the other stuff in the fall that when they came to us, I was already um, overstimulated. And so my responses uh, weren't met always with patience. And 
I just felt like I was not doing a great job of um, enjoying the process. What I realized though is yes, I took a two month break after our kids reunified um, in March, which is awesome. And we still get to, you know, be a part of their life, which I'm so thankful for. Uh, but I didn't, I didn't like really grieve. And I found myself over, over the holidays grieving again. Um, I mean, holidays are hard, I think. And I was just like missing them a lot. And um, I just realized that I need to give myself uh, more time, I guess, before we take another long-term placement. And also, because um, July, our 17-year-old, is very uh, independent, when we did have the other two kids here who needed so much attention, I really was not giving her what she needed. Yes, you can take care of herself. Yes, of course, she would join us for meal times, And, you know, I met all her basic needs, but I really didn't have a lot of time for connecting. Um, after the kids, you know, would go, two kids would go to sleep. Um, we wouldn't want to, like, turn on the TV or watch anything until we knew that they were asleep asleep. And then by that point, you know, it's like 920 and I am exhausted and I'm trying to stay up till to, to 10 to connect with July because that's when she, you know, wants to connect. But I just was finding myself exhausted and we were not having um, a lot of connecting time and that was hard for our relationship. Uh, she, you know, is so understanding and completely understood, but at the same time, uh, because I know that, you know, she's going to be launching into adulthood and I'm just like, well, I really want to spend um, the, the next, you know, several months and just really focusing on her and helping um, get some life skills and helping her just to maybe get a job, driver's license, you know, all of those things. And it's overwhelming and it's like, oh, you know, normally with, you know, with a kid, you have a lot of, a lot of years, a lot of building steps and, you know, she's eager to learn certain things and I have to take the time to help, you know, teach them those things. The so one area that we've been working on is she's been helping, helping me make um, the dinners and prepping for that. And it is um, so amazing to see just in the last like week that we've been doing this where she's been helping me every night with, with dinners is that she is really um, like thriving a lot better. She won't touch raw meat yet. Gotta get her to touch the raw meat. She wants gloves to touch it with and I have gloves, but she doesn't wanna use those. She's still like getting over it. But I'm like, all right, as long as you know, you can cut the vegetables and, and, and prep that stuff. So she's helping. That's like something um, that we're doing and yeah, whew, there's just a lot of emotions uh, honestly too with coming into like adulthood and I obviously just, I, not obviously, I guess you know, I haven't really shared this yet, but I love her so much um, and I want what's best for her. And I also know that like, she's the one that's gonna have to be, have to be making the decisions. And uh, I think that she will be a part of our life for way after she is 18. At the same time though too, like, she doesn't love being the only <laughs> child in the house. She's not used to that. Uh, she is used to having other uh, kids around. And so this is a little different for her. And so to kind of help balance that and not so be overwhelming, um, what we're doing is respite. Uh, we actually had before, um, back in I think it was uh, beginning of December, I had a friend who we watched their kids last summer ask if I could watch their kids for like a whole month. And so I knew that was coming up in 2024. And so I was like, all right, well, up until this point, then I probably won't take any other placements. And then so we just opened it up for respite for other people. And so as of right now, up until uh, April, we have... Oh, what is it? We have 14 um, kids already lined up for respite. And of those 14, uh, we've already had nine of them in our house before for respite. So that's 
what's been really cool and I see that there is such a need for respite when we were going through really hard times um, with uh, different placements that we had. I know respite was so necessary for us just to be able to get a little bit of a breather and we didn't just use it for um, vacation. You know, at first that's what I thought respite was mostly used for is, you know, so the foster parents can go on vacation, but we utilized it when we just needed a mental break and we utilized it over um, like weekends so we could actually spend some time with whoever was left in the house um, who didn't like have all the kids leave we just had you know um one or two leave and so that was super super helpful and I just know that I want to be available for that to helping other uh foster parents and um four of those kids we're going to be having like for six weeks over six weeks um, um from now until april so quite a bit of time and so because of that there's you know bigger chunks that they'll be here um we will be able to you know our july won't be the only um uh, kid or teenager in the house and so she'll she will like um having you know a little bit and also it's nice in respite to be like okay this is only for like you know four weeks or it's only for one week or it's only for two days and then to know that um, there's kind of an end in sight and so I think that will be helpful for her I know it will also be helpful for us I'm really focusing on intentional rest. Um, I'm going um, to do um, a, a group um, through our church um, that just uh, deals with people struggling in different ways and just helping to kind of um, move past this grief um, and healing. Um, so that's, you know, my focus for 2024 um, to make sure that whenever we do take another placement, longer term placement, that uh, I will be fully ready. And I mean, I don't know if you're ever completely ready because, you know, every child is different and you need to learn um, different things. But I think um, by having, giving myself a little bit longer of a break, hopefully then coming back with um, just more compassion and understanding um, for what the these children are going through. So that is uh, where we are at. That's the update for what I think is going to happen in 2024. And um, like I said, we'll do respite for at least until April. Honestly, I'm kind of thinking probably to the end of the summer or maybe honestly the whole year. Uh, we'll just kind of um, take it one step at a time and see where we go. So thanks so much for watching. Definitely subscribe if you are not already and we'll see you in the next video. It looks like I need to take a phone call. Bye guys.